are some pretty big guys. They're going to throw some punches at 207 on the catch weight. So. These guys almost went out at the weigh-ins last night. Uh, Gagnon and uh, Ayers, I had to separate them myself. It was, it was almost ugly last night. I actually was standing uh, next to Greg in, in, in the uh, room when they have the, gave the, uh, the pre-fight uh, rule. They went over to pre-fight rules. You'll see in the third man in the ring is going to be Dan Ray. He'll be in there, and he'll have a, a tough go at this. These guys are, are both heavy. Here you see Corey Webster coming with his fighter in there. Raymond yeah. Arias is about to enter the cage. TJ Summerlin, another pro fighter from Western New York's in this corner. As well as Scott Skinner, another guy that fights in the lace-up. There you go. Coming in, so this should be an all-out brutal war. You see Frankie Skelso there. Frankie Skelso is going to be doing the inspections of the, of the fighters before they enter the cage. And uh, so Frankie's going to inspect uh, the fights where, where uh, Dan's in the middle, and when Dan's uh, not in the middle and Frankie's in the middle, they're going to be uh, inspecting each other on the way in. So Gagmon just gave me a little uh, heads he up, <laughs> like my write-up. Yeah, these two guys are going to come at each other with some ill will, I think, when this bell goes. Uh, and Arias, this is his first fight, so he's going to want to make a mark here, so he's going to come out hard. Yeah. Both guys, Gagnon looks like a football player, man. He just looks like he's going to come out. Broad and kill shoulders, somebody. boy. Yeah. He's got some broad shoulders standing right in front of us. There you see. And there you see uh, Raymond Arias going, you know, being checked out there. Now, this is a precautionary measure, Jeff, to, to make sure there's nothing that illegal being brought into the ring. Yeah, it's actually to make sure that the guys aren't uh, covered in, like, Vaseline or something that would make it slippery for when they clinch and they, they uh, engage in the ground. Or right. any metal whatsoever anywhere around. That's right. So. It's going to be a little tough to distinguish here, so we'll let you know the gag down here is going to have the uh, Venom short side here with the uh, uh, black and red. And, and mostly red will be uh, Raymond Arias. Uh, he'll be fighting out of the blue corner. And it will go up to uh, Don Lilly. You will see that on some of their hands when you see them out here because they have the red tape or the blue tape to the hands. So when we say out of the red or blue, that's how you will pick it up in our HD broadcast. Those eight ounce gloves are small. They look, they look like they're gloves, but there's not much protecting the knuckles. So it's really easy to get knockouts with guys this big. I guess a lot of there's a there's a mixed uh, reaction there with Arias being uh, mentioned. So here we go again. Danny Ray, third man in the ring, we'll waiting to make sure judges okay. Here we go, fight. Way right, right away, you want to throw some heavy lumber. Mixed martial arts, you can, every, anything's allowed except what Jeff said at the beginning. There's a kick right in there, and these are going to totally go each other. Oh, that was kind of a miss. Now that one wasn't a miss. Right hand missed the first time, kind of not gagging off balance, and the second one was not a miss. It hit him and took him to the floor. Now we'll get to see these guys' ground game. Harris isn't really uh, following up. He's just laying on top right now, taking a breath. First fight. There he goes. Now he's starting to need a body. He goes right into the you know, right love, rib cage. Got in the full guard. Gagnon get full guard now. Full guard. Now Gagnon needs to close his guard and keep him tight. He needs to get a stand up or work to try and sweep the guy. And if you can get that close, Jeff, it takes a little bit of the power away from the hits coming to the head. You know they're coming. Correct. The bottom man always wants to break the top guy's posture. Right. The better posture top guy has, the harder he can hit. And these guys can hit hard. Yeah, these guys are really wailing to it. This is what you see, the ground game now as they're going. You see, look at Danny Ray right in there looking. He's going to be talking to them. What he's doing, he's Gagnon's talking to these actually guys. looking for an arm bar. He's climbing up looking for an arm bar. Bears shut him down with some punches. Two good rights to the face by... Arius. He's trying to get those feet in there to get his hips off. He's trying to get the, get the space and clear space so he can get out. So Greg's trying to push him off. So you see that right foot right in that left thigh trying to push him off when he's talking to him. Both these referees told these fighters that they, when we talk to you, we want you to respond. We want to know that you're okay. That foot in the hip actually prevents uh, Arius from coming in and, and uh, getting on top better. There's more space for him to be able to stand up. It's the first part of the uh, technical stand up. Again, three three-minute rounds here going, and 
think you're going to see him stand them up here pretty soon. There's not a whole lot going on down there. They got him tied up pretty well. We're going to uh, see how good these guys' condition is in a little bit. They're both looking kind of tired down there right now. Boy, they both looked in great shape coming in there. The left hand misses there. Oh, there's the armbar attempt. The arm oh, and a pass. The he tries to get it. Now yep. he's trying to. He didn't have the hips in deep enough to secure that arm bar. He, he shouldn't have even really thrown it. He's just going to let uh, Ayers pass his guard. Pretty good clinch in there right now. Gearhart's got a hold of him. Closed up all that space. There's not a whole lot to swing yeah. at. See Definitely. a little bit of blood on the left nostril there. It looks like Agnes is trying to hold on for a stand up. And every, whenever Ayers gives him some room, he tries an arm bar. Now he's trying to uh, sweep. There's only 10 seconds left in this yep. first round. There's a couple of good, there's a kick to get away, and there it goes. There's the horn. And both fighters look at each other's eyes as they go to their respective corners. Yes. I would call that 10-9 for uh, Gagnon, or uh, I mean Ayers. Yep. Oh, no doubt about it. He had the advantage. You, you know, even though uh, Gagnon tried to get a couple defensive moves, he really didn't. He really didn't make them count. Yeah, like, just like uh, kickboxing or boxing, we uh, use a 10-point must system in amateur MMA as well. So one fighter gets 10 points and the other gets nine or eight, depending on how the round goes. And you saw Gagnon um, during the round over there talking to the official over along the ground. And just as soon as that was over, Dan Ray just came over here, did a great thing. He walked over and just explained what he was doing to him right here, just as he came out of the corner. Doesn't take his time away from his trainers and his ring guy or corner guys, but he explained what he was calling over there. Yeah, so Dan well. Ray's a really solid ref. He's been all over. He knows what's going on in there. And, uh, doesn't take any. Doesn't take anything from anybody. And who we got in that corner here? We got a couple guys here in uh, in Greg's corner. Yeah, I'm uh, actually not sure who those guys are. They're instructing. Uh, uh, they're really trying to get him to put some combinations together and keep his hands tighter. It looked like he was dropping his hands a little bit, and that's how he got clipped. Uh, I watched a lot of his fights. He gets uh, really. Uh, it looks like he gets mad in there, and he just drops his hands and starts really swinging for defenses, but it leaves his face open. When he caught that first punch, it looked like he put his hands up and was just trying to like bat away the yeah. hands and nothing hit. <laughs> You're gonna power right through that at 207 pounds. Yeah. So, uh, and that's when he got that second that second yeah. shot. Eris is really impressive for his first fight with his hands. It's hard to be loose in there. Oh, he missed with a left there, and Gagnon came oh, over, yeah. but if he didn't miss with a right. You see Gagnon's hands he's are coming, coming down. Coming he's coming he's lunging right at him. He's, he's telling him to come out, and he hits him with a kick on the way in, and it tries to get him, but now the back. Oh, Greg Gagnon tried to backhand, did it. He missed, and he took one. Blood coming out of the nostril. Now these are throwing some. Oh, some lumbers being thrown up here in there right now. Oh, this is what. But this is what Gagnon wants. He wants to stand up. Oh, and he gets back. Oh, now he's waiting. That looked like it hit him in the back of the head as he spun around. Arias is daring him to stand back up. He's going to tell him stand back up. We want him up. Come on up. Yeah. There we go, good job by Danny Ray. Gagnon comes in with a kick and he misses. There's a good right knee to the clavicle there. Next couple. Danny Ray, she watches close, he's kind of hurt. Let me ask you, Jeff, did it, was, it, was it more of a uh, let him think I'm hurt so he does get on top of me and bring him down to the mat, or because he want, it looks like obviously he wants to fight from the mat. I I don't know. I, he's not really. I don't think he's doing too well down there. If that's his strategy, I, I don't think it's a very good one. Time for a new strategy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think he's hurt. I think he's still a little bit on uh, rock from the earlier exchange. It looked where it looked like he got hit in the back of the head a little bit. Man, these HD cameras bring you right into the ring, right into the action here, as you see. And if Raymond yeah. Arias right on top now, and that's Greg Gagan on the bottom. And that pressure being put on him, he's trying to get up the amount of pressure in the core of his body right there. I mean, it just takes a lot out of you. Yeah, having a guy that's heavy on you just sucks the wind out of you. He's laying on top, it's constricting your chest. It's really hard to breathe down there. In the first round, though, I, 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 you know, Arias got a couple. Oh, he's got to mount now. Now he's looking for some serious ground and pound. A little ground and pound action there. This Arms. is the. the ultimate position in MMA when you can be mounted and just rain your strikes down. It's really hard for the bottom man to close that space. That, that was close to an elbow there, I think, but uh, Dan Ray right on top of it. They know that the fists are coming down. The right and the right one. Oh, and another right in there by Dan Ray's looking in close. 
And they're watching him good. He's getting he's getting pummeled right now with combinations galore. I was going to tell you in the first round, he got the knees to the to the body to the rib cage. Yeah. It, it worked well, but right here, this ground and pound is just as ground and pound at a perfection. He's open for an arm bar, and that arm he's pushing up right now. If Harris wants to go for it, all he has to do is swing that leg around, and take that arm, and end the fight. But it looks like he's just com confident to ground and pound him out right here. And it doesn't look like he's got much to be able to do there. Ten seconds to go in round two. Danny Ray taking a look. He's asking him to say his eyes are very okay. clear. Yeah, he says I'm fine. But boy, right there, that's almost a 10-8 round. But I mean, I guess you go 10-9. But uh, definitely Arias with uh, we would say won that for sure. And then probably the yeah, that could be a 10-8. Well. He dropped him twice, and he landed right. an awesome knee and a ground and pound. It's a good round. Yeah, and look at the swelling over the right eye of Gagnon. I don't know if we're gonna, our camera's going to pick up that, but his right eye is just brutally swollen. Yeah. There you go. Get a good, there's a good camera angle there. Look at that left eye there, and the right, even the right's even bigger. See the right? It's a pretty good hematoma he's got going on right there. He sure does. He's got a huge hematoma on the right side and on the left as well. Oh, at least he looks like he's been in a fight. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> there you see Arias so over in the fight. far. Arias over in the far corner, getting a little bit of instruction there. That's uh, Eric Herbert over there, professional fighter. He's a my coach. He's a great MMA instructor. The Western New York corner is awesome. We got all professional fighters in the corners. Corey Webster, yes. Mike Dub, the jiu-jitsu coach. This is a phenomenal school in the area. And I'll tell you right now, I mean, uh, I don't think I don't think you're going to see uh, Greg Gagnon going to really uh, try to. Lure him out of the mat again now because I don't think he's got the strength now to be able to. He needs a knockout or submission to win right. this fight. He can throw the one, but he still looks like he's got a good. Uh, Harris looks tired though. Look at Harris. I was going to say he does. His mouth is more wide open than Greg's. Gag that now it needs to do needs to uh, probably a knockout here to win or a submission. Oh. And there you go, right away, a good right by Arias. Arias is just oh, he those right counters. In. He was about a half an inch from putting this fight over. Just missed the chip. Arias is throwing some, some heavy lumber as well with it. Right, right there. Gagnon's a camera, he's coming forward. He wants right. to take this, this fight. Oh, oh, took a hard couple of shots there. I think Danny Ray is really close to stopping this fight if Ferris would just hit him a little bit right here. Ferris wants another stand up, I think. He's gonna, Arias knows he just stands there and takes this, he's gonna he's win. He's kicking it right now, he's kicking at the knees right here too. That uh, you saw Gagnon right there try to kick directly at the knee. Um, Gagnon asked why. Why can't he come down on? Why do we got to stand up? And that's what you have to do when you yeah. get instructions from uh, Danny Ray. Wrestling's a big part of MMA. If you can't get the guy down, you can't just land your back. Oh, and the right knocks him out. He's done. It's over. That's it's it's over. Player. He is out. He's out. Arias does it. Raymond Arias with that right hand. I told you he was a half an inch from it. And here it is that right replay. Here. Watch this right. Watch the right and the chin. On the chin, and down he goes. And you see the head, once you see that head hit the floor like that, Danny Ray did the right thing and just waved it off after Libby right into the ring right away. That was some punishment in there that uh, was delivered. And both of these guys know that they've been in a big fight. Yeah, that, that Gagnon kid, he just got, he reaches out and it leaves himself open for the right hands and the counters. Just got to get it tighter on his feet. He, he looks like all the whole part of a fighter. I mean, he's, he's a big, scary guy. Dr. Libby is right there. They got her. They've got him halfway up here. They're going to bring him up slow. But uh, the paramedics are in the ring as well. So the paramedics are in there. And I'll tell you what. Like Jeff said, the hematoid. There you get a good look at the corner there, Jeff. Yeah. There's uh, Eric Herbert on the right. There's uh, T.J. Summerlin. He's a, a crazy pro now at 170. I'm not sure who, uh, who the other guy is in the corner there. Rick Rogers, another uh, police officer, at trains at WNY. Does he get in there? Yes. And look here, you see Greg. Greg really still doesn't know exactly where he is. Dr. Olivia's going to make sure he's going to go. He still wants to walk over and congratulate on a nice fight. And there's uh, the two fighters. They put it all aside after it's over. 
It sure did. Uh, Eric showed a good stand-up in that fight for his first fight. It's hard to be loose. Yeah, it's great. Jeff's going to jump in there and get some interviews. Right, we're going to go up to the uh, see Dan Ray is going to go up and Don Lilly with the announcement. There you see it. seat now here is uh, both fighters talk to each other, talk it over, talk the strategy, and boy, it was a war in there for uh, two and a half rounds. And uh, Jeff Denz is going to be in the ring. And try you were Ray Arias and just had a big KO. How did that feel? Feels good. Man, I train with you in the gym all the time. I never seen you throwing that in the gym. Where did that come from? Training with TJ. <laughs> He's a beast. Any shout outs you want to give out to anyone besides for TJ? I want to give a shout out to my family, my brother Chico. Oh my, oh my, uh, Western New York MMA guys, you, you help me with the wrestling, so everybody at the gym, man. All right, great fight, Raymond. Welcome to TNT. We need some more knockouts like that. Let's go. I'll be here, I'll be here for the summer event. I'll be there for the summer event, Jim. There you see it. Jeff goes in there and uh, and makes it happen there. Nice interview there is a uh, tough, tough fight. Yeah, very tough fight there. They, uh, like we said, those big guys can throw some law. They can throw some punches out there, and uh, you know, so they can really throw. The knockouts are always there. So uh, great job, and nice job by Jeff. Jeff jumping up into the uh, ring there, up into oh. the cage, and getting a, getting right. a little well, tap. That's good, and he wants more of it, more of that action. But it was nice to see uh, Raymond talk to you know Jeff and recognize you in there too, as helping him with those wrestling moves. So, I mean, you, you know, you need that. You need every facet of uh, mix. That's why it's mixed martial art. You need somebody to, to uh, you know, to hone all your uh, all your uh, moves in, uh, in boxing, your, your boxing moves, your yeah, wrestling hands, moves Chris and everything. Nice. And the gym, like, I never really seen him, like, throw hands like that. He looked really good tonight. Well, our next bout here is a Tired girls entered the ring. It's a 125-pound bite bounce, so we're gonna go a lot lighter, a flyweight. It's gonna be sponsored by the U.S. Air Force here, and uh, we got a couple of fighters uh, gonna be having their first fight here in the TNT Fight Series. This is it started out, and it's really living up to its name, December to dismember, and we've you seen uh, two dismemberments already, just about <laughs> as uh, Mark. Mendez is going to come in in the, in the uh, red corner at an MV MMA, and I'm not sure exactly where That's it is. That's uh, Mohawk Valley MMA. Oh, Mohawk Valley MMA. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, uh, Devil and Speed will be in a blue corner out of Buffalo United. Both of these fighters come in here. This is their first fight for both fighters, so 125 pound flyweight bout. Both fighters, it's their first fight, so let's see what they can do here in the ring. So I'm sure they're both pretty excited. Yeah, 125 is an exciting weight class. They're literally move around a lot. It should be a great fight. I actually work a little bit with Delvin Speed over at Buffalo United with uh, Keith Brandt and uh, Josh Ketry. They just started their school. And so Delvin's their first fighter out of that school. And uh, Mark Mendez comes out of Mohawk Valley. They got a ton of fighters. And they actually, uh, one of their guys, Jody Curtis, is fighting for a title tonight. So he's had a training partner to train with. So we're going to see an uh, experienced school against an inexperienced school, and we'll see what happens tonight. You're right. As a matter of fact, you're right. Jody Curtis is in there in the 125-pound championship bout. We have uh, on our third to last main event here in this uh, TNT series. Again, thanks to Don Lilly for all, everything he's given us. Uh, Phil Sarnicki out in the truck, and I'll tell you what, our cameraman, is, I mean, it's just like the coverage out there. It's just like being on the mat. And there is, uh, we get set for our next fight. The door is open. We're waiting for the fire, fighters to enter the, uh, the ring. Yeah, the camera guys are doing a nice job tonight in there. I mean, we've got the perfect angles in here, and uh, they're able to get uh, get right into the ring with us. And uh, Phil Sarnicki, as we said, out in the truck, doing a great job pulling up those replays. So, uh, and here we go. We're bringing our first uh, fighter, Mark Mendez, into the ring. Jeff, tell us how important it is to have somebody like Dan Rain, especially Frankie Scalzo, who we've seen fight 
uh, before. Um, he, he, I know, I know Frankie has been known as, as uh, one of the best. I mean, that, that everybody try to, to emulate him. I mean, tell, tell us how, how, how important it is to have somebody like uh, these two guys in the, as third man in the ring. It's so important for fighter safety. With, uh, with us trying to get uh, MMA legalized in New York, we need to have really solid, good referees that know the fight game. Frankie Scalzo is an experienced fighter himself. He has some crazy fights, so he knows what's going on. He knows when a guy's really in trouble, when a guy wants the fight to stop, because no one's going to say they want the fight to stop, but then they'll come thank you in the, in the locker room after, you know? And uh, Frank, Frankie Scalzo and um, and uh, Dan are both know what, what's going on and what's going on in the fighter's mind, and they communicate very well with the fighters, so it's great, and we need to keep our fighters safe. It's, that's what the uh, amateur level is all about, having uh, fighters develop and stay safe. Well, as we get said here, Mark Mendez is in the uh, the cage. And as we await, uh, you see him. Uh, Dan Ray is uh, doing the inspecting in there, and Delvin Speed. And you know a little bit about Delvin, Jeff. Why don't you let us uh, fill us in a little bit? Uh, yeah, I trained with him. This is his first fight. He trains out of Buffalo United, which is known for their uh, jiu-jitsu. Um, but I know that he's basically a stand-up guy. He doesn't really have too much jiu-jitsu. So, uh, We'll, we'll see what's going on. He looks great in the camp. I just was at his camp on Friday, watched him train, man. He looks great. He's in really, really good shape. Here we go. We're still waiting here for uh, Delvin Speed to come in. Oh, oh, there he is. I'm sorry I missed him. Come in. I'm not a big fan of guys that fight in a shock doctor's shorts. <laughs> well, it looks a little indecent for TV almost. There yeah, you see Delvin Speed being in those guys. A lot of people like uh, from uh, Buffalo United come up and support these uh, fighters. Yeah, it's their first fighter. It's a big fight for the school. Let's see where uh, where they're at.